Hello and welcome to the Total Entertainment Podcast with me, Paul Collis. And today, we're going to take a look at supporting artists, the Sherlocks and the Fratellis, who were supporting the Kaiser Chiefs on tour. Let's get started and we'll start off with the Sherlocks. Let's get on it. The Sherlocks are a rock band from Sheffield, South Yorkshire. The band consists of brothers Kieran and Brendan Crook, along with Alex Proctor and Trent Jackson. The band played at Reading and Leeds festivals in 2015. The single Heart of God received airplay from BBC Radio 1's and Mac, Hugh Stevens, Greg James and BBC Six Music, Steve Lamax. The fourth single, Last Night, was released in February 2016 with the band being invited by BBC introducing to play the SXSW Festival in March 2016 in Austin, Texas. The band also played in Manchester's part of Dot to Dot Festival in May 2016, followed by once more playing at the Leeds and Reading Festival 2016. In 2016, they supported the Libertines as part of their arena tour. The Sherlocks released their fifth single, You Will Be There, on the 15th of September 2016. The Sherlocks announced they had been signed by Infectious Music on the 19th of December in 2016. A limited edition 7-inch vinyl of Will You Be There was released in early January 2017, entering the official UK vinyl singles charts at number one on the 13th of January. On the 26th of January 2017, the band released a sixth single, Was It's Really Worth It, with the video appearing online on Valentine's Day on the 14th of February, which also topped the official UK vinyl singles chart. In early 2020, brothers Josh Davidson and Andy Davidson decided to leave the band, and later, in November 2020, the band announced that Alex Proctor would join the band on the guitar with Trent Jackson on the bass. A new album was also mentioned at this time for release in 2021. On the 25th of April in 2017, the Sherlock's announced their debut album, Live For The Moment, released on the 18th of August 2017, as well as their seventh single, Chasing Shadows, of which the video was released on on the 27th of April 2017. On the 8th of June 2019, the band played at Elland Road Stadium for the celebration of 100 years of Leeds United, supporting Kaiser Chiefs and the vaccines. And then... On the 17th of June 2019, it was announced the band would release their second album, Under Your, S- Under Your Sky, on the 4th of October 2019. They also announced a UK and European tour on this date, which they will play songs from their Live For The Moment tracks. On the 17th of June 2019, the Sherlocks also announced their track NYC, Sing It Loud, would feature on BBC Radio 1, played by Annie Mack. And on the 12th of July 2019, the band played at Castlefield Bowl supporting the Kooks alongside other indie band Seagulls. So the discography is Live for the Moment in 2017, Under Your Sky in 2019, and this year, World I Understand. The Fratellis are a Scottish rock band from Glasgow. Formed in 2005, the band consists of lead vocalist and guitarist John Fratelli, bassist Barry Fratelli and drummer Mince Fratelli. Their singles Chelsea Dagger and Whistle for the, Whistle for the Choir were both top 10 hits in the UK charts. The band's name came from the criminal family in the Goonies and received their first radio playing in 2005 on Central Scotland's Beats 106, later XFM Scotland, now Capital Scotland. Beat scene show hosted by Jim and Gellenty. They were then signed by Fallout Records after less than 10 shows. The band formed after the band the band formed after the band members placed adverts in record stores around Glasgow, originally forming as a four-piece with Mints on lead guitar and drummer called Chris, who was soon fired. They played their first proper show on the 4th of March in 2005 in the O. Henry's Bar in Glasgow, across the road from the Horseshoe Bar. The Fratelli's EP was released on the 3rd of April 2006, featuring the tracks Stacey Ann and The Guitari. Creeping Up the Backstairs was never a single released by the band, even though a video was made for it. 
The first single released by the band was Henrietta, which was released on the 12th of June 2006 and charted at number 19 on the UK charts. Costello Music was the debut album for the Fratellis and was released on the 1st of September in 2006. It charted at number 2 in the UK album chart for three weeks. The success of the album led to the Fratellis winning a Brit Award for Best, Brit- Best Breakthrough Brit. Be- the Brit Award for Best British Breakthrough Act in 2007, an award that was voted for by the BBC Radio 1 listeners. The Fratellis supported Kasabian in December 2006 on their UK tour before playing 10 dates by themselves in February and March in 2007. The tour of the UK festival circuit playing at Glastonbury and headlining at festivals such as Enemies Rock and Riot Tour, Oxygen in 2007 and Tea in the Park in 2007 amongst others. They also opened for the Police Reunion Tour in the summer of 2007 in some of the North America dates. The Fratellis also recorded some cover songs during the year including All Along the Watchtower for Radio 1's 40th anniversary double album Radio 1 established 1967 and Solid Gold Easy Action for the soundtrack of the film Hot Fuzz which 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 also included the single Baby Fratelli. So there's been a some side projects so during the band downtime John went on to form a new band with singer-songwriter Lou Hickley called Codeine Velvet Club. He released a self-titled album with the band in December 2009 and touring during late 2009 and early 2010. The band came to a finish when he decided to become a solo artist. He released his debut studio album Psycho Jukebox in 2010 and intended to release a second titled Bright Night Flowers in 2012 but this was shelved due to the Fratellis reuniting. Barry initially stated that he was starting his own musical project and would let Fratelli's fans know about it via the Fratelli's website. He didn't let fans know his musical ventures until November 2011, where he revealed he had joined Birmingham band The Twang, who he played with until August 2012. When he rejoined the Fratelli's, he is, he is also a regular on the DJ circuit and still DJs now when he can. Mintz initially joined a heavy metal band called Thorn O Diablo before leaving the band for unknown reasons. He would go on to join John Solo's band as a second drummer, backing vocalist and occasional guitarist during live shows for his Psycho Jig Box tour. After the recording of In Your Own Sweet Time, John had quietly re-recorded and shelved 2012 solo album Bright Night Flowers and after the main bulk of time was finished for In Your Own Sweet Time, John announced his solo album would be released in February 2019, supported with two shows in London and Glasgow. His first solo show in six years featured nearly the entirety of Bright Night Flowers with only one song from his previous solo album showing up along with the Fratelli's favourites Whistle for the Choir and Laughing Gas in rearranged forms and a series of covers. So touring members of the band, so uh, additional members basically, so session musicians, we have Will Foster on electric keyboard and piano, Ryan Quigley on trumpet, Paul Towndrow on saxophone and the Wild Tonics on backing vocals and here is their discography so you've got Castello Music in 2006, Here We Stand in 2008, We Need Medicine in 2013, Eyes Wide Tongue Tied in 2015, In Your Own Sweet Time in 2018 and Half Drunk Under the Full Moon in 2021. A tribute to men that hate their jobs is a brutal but witty portrayal of working a job you hate. In this podcast there are themes explored in which happy workers simply wouldn't understand unless they listen to these cautionary tales from a man that lost his ideal job because of the global pandemic. Be warned that this podcast contains strong offensive language that some listeners may not want to hear. In addition, this podcast is definitely not recommended for younger audiences. The links for this is in the description below. And we're back. So the Sherlock's, the house lights went down, and they walked onto the dark, onto the stage in a dark blue and pink wash, with a little bit of face light. 
and that face light was a little trickle from the front house set bar so one thing that I have to stress on this is space space being very very tight and so so you just got to remember this so due to the stage being full of equipment the Sherlock's couldn't move around too much and yeah so they were heavily restricted in that movement so they couldn't have much of a performance because if they did they'll end up tripping over another drum kit or someone else's guitar stands other mic stands amplifiers that are already there so they were pretty much rooted onto the spot which was a shame but it didn't really affect their performance too well they just uh, couldn't interact with each other because they were uh, spread across a few little islands of uh, stage that was available so they're in twos and that's the only way that they could interact with as twos rather than an entire band because everything was in their way lighting wise they had only a side light from the from the flowing side trusses and some of the uh, moving lights that are on the floor and that was pretty much it so they're getting cross lit with a little bit of face light and their set was pretty much a same look throughout with a, f with a few variations and they were also gifted a small handful of the uh, profile units that are on LX1 that was behind them and at the top so it, when they were used which wasn't all the time they were in tight narrow beams which were there to use to emphasize points of the song you know in whites a little bit of gobo break up or, or even a little bit of gobo rotation to hit the audience as well so nice little stabby lights but that's all they had and it did look good basic but good they were constantly lit which is all they needed to uh, that which is all they needed at the end of the day and they had changed one of the colors from the wash per uh, song so that is about it it's just a little bit of background color on a white on a white wash so they can be seen and that's essentially it now sound wise damn it, it was good it was definitely 22 karat gold clarity and it is a really it was a really high standard i enjoyed that sound mix it's out it had a lovely balance between all the uh, vocals and instruments and keeping everything nicely balanced as well personally i did feel the uh, sherlock's had a real good set and at one point it did look quite impressive actually the drummer lost one of his drumsticks so as he uh, as he hit the drum and uh, raised his hand up for a second go the uh, drumstick left his hand spanned through the air and uh, <laughs> and went behind him and for me that kind of went in slow motion you could just imagine with the uh, drumstick just gliding through the air but like a true pro before anyone even noticed that the uh, stick was in the air he had pulled out a spare stick and carried on drumming uh, as though nothing had happened but <laughs> it was funny to watch it's not often that you see that and a good drummer is a prepared drummer and he was definitely a prepared drummer and as I said earlier on which is not their fault because of the distance from the rest of the band and whatnot and the stage being cluttered where they couldn't really move around it did affect their stage presence but then again they were big enough on their own in their little sections of the stage and it did look good and they did play really well considering and I do feel like the Sherlock's were an excellent choice for a warm-up band because the the audience enjoyed them and you could tell that because they're singing and dancing and bopping up and down at points and whatnot but I did feel sorry for the lead singer at one point his radio mic failed at the start of a song 
and he didn't he didn't realize because he uh, what goes what he hears in the um, mix on stage is not what he's hearing in front of the house so he didn't realize that his microphone died he didn't <laughs> so he was singing for a while you could hear him being picked up in into the microphone from the guitarist next to him which was used for backing vocals and then the uh, <laughs> guitarist went up to him he's like oi your mic's dead use mine and then <laughs> <laughs> then he swapped over and uh, the uh, sound engineer managed to uh, raise the volume and make it sound more prominent because it's now the lead vocalist microphone. But it was good. And yeah, the show carried on. He didn't stop doing, he didn't want to restart the song. He just, he just carried on from where he was and they just looped the song around because it's their song they can loop it around and he started the lyrics again. They just didn't stop playing. It was good. It's good to see that. And yeah, they just carried on like true professionals and absolute troopers. That is exactly how you'd want a band to react. Just like, okay, right, it's died. We're going to carry on and and we're just going to do what people want us. We're going to do what we're there to do and that's perform. So it went down and that went down really well with the audience. You just had that vibe because when that song finished they had a real massive round of applause right so let's get straight on to how the Fratellis were well they started off with the Can Can theme for their um, for their overture so we've seen this a lot recently this year that bands have different songs by different artists as overtures before they start for their intro and the Fratellis were no different but the can can what an interesting uh, song to use uh, for your overture and you had people in the audience dancing the can can obviously yeah not with their dresses showing their knickers but <laughs> they uh, were there just doing the uh, can can leg movements you uh, most of which were uh, pissed up young men <laughs> But it was funny to watch and uh, people clapping along to the can can although the stage was dark it was empty and as soon as the overture had finished the lights came up to reveal the band who were then pretty much uh, in position ready to go and and yeah they kicked straight off as soon as the uh, can can finished the lights were there they went straight into their song now Fortunately for the Fratellis, they had more space on stage because the Sherlock's kit had then just been moved out of the way, been cleared from the stage because it was no longer needed. And it was more animated. So you had the three yet female backing vocalists uh, for the Fratellis who were rooted to their backing singer position, but they were constantly dancing. Uh, <laughs> they're dancing like a 1950s do wop uh, gal group which was fun and uh, the Fratellis themselves they were they were fun to watch they were fun to listen to so let's get on to how the show looked yeah so yet again the lighting was kept as basic as possible because I guess they just didn't want to ruin the look for the uh, Kaiser Chiefs but it was fine it was yet again wash after wash with a slight colour variation and what they did for the colour variations rather than the uh, light coming from the uh, flowing side trusses they just had the colour variations on the floor units which just crossed the stage lighting up the drum kit, lighting up the amplifiers and whatnot, lighting their legs and it did look good uh, it's not often that you see that these days because that's quite an old school lighting technique just lighting the underside and lighting the uh, top side completely different it's a nice accent color and i'm going to stick with that name accent color that's how i've always gone with it some people are like what you're talking about but at the end of the day if you're going to have multi colors on the stage and you want to distinguish it i would always call it an accent color because it was always an accent of the uh, main color of the wash now sound wise once again perfect 
as perfect sound quality as you could get, I suppose. I mean, it wasn't quite platinum standard, but it was very, very close to it. Very clear with the clarity. Every vocal from the backing singers to the lead singers to the other band members who had a few uh, bits of backing vocal as well from time to time. They were all heard perfectly and uniquely and combine that with the instruments being played yet again it was very very unique and you could hear absolutely everything in its own right and it was all perfectly balanced as well and the fratellis well their stage presence came across tenfold to that of the sherlocks and yet again i will remind you it wasn't the sherlocks fault because they really couldn't move around because they're rooted to the same spots because of the space because of the space on the stage but the fratellis they use coolness they're enjoying themselves on stage the audience were enjoying them playing as well really so much you had people singing dancing yet again bopping along and everyone in that whole arena from both audience crew and the band everyone just enjoying the vibe had a real good atmosphere in there really did and a good song selection as well a few covers but and a, and some of their own songs and it was a great set to see a very great set to see very well done on the vocal uh, on the vocal ability from the lead singer and the instruments played impe impeccably well what more could you ask for? So two very strong support bands for the Kaiser Chiefs, and everyone that was in that, everyone that was in the arena today, definitely had value for money. I mean, three amazing bands who are playing really well and have got a good stage presence. Definitely good value for money on tonight's show. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please hit like, subscribe and share. And if you haven't already done so, why not check out more content from Asterix Media by clicking the link in the description below. And we shall catch you next time. Bye for now.